recall that scalars and vectors are two different types of physical quantities. So because they differ from one another, adding them involves different methods. So let's begin with the addition of scalars. So how exactly do you add scalars? Well, recall that scalars have magnitude only and no direction. And that means addition of scalars involves simple algebraic sum. So let's suppose we're dealing with the scalar distance. And let's suppose some car travels in the first day a distance of 200 kilometers and in the second day a distance of 300 kilometers. To find the total distance in a two-day period, we simply add these two scalar values up. So 200 kilometers plus 300 kilometers gives us 500 kilometers is our total distance. Now, let's look at vectors. Vectors are more complicated, and that's because they not only have magnitude, but also direction. So, we have different cases for our addition of vectors. So, let's suppose our two vectors, v1 and v2, point in the same exact direction along the same exact axis. Let's suppose our axis is the x-axis. Here we have velocity vector 1 and velocity vector 2. To find the total vector, the final resultant vector, resultant is simply our final vector after we sum up the two or more vectors. So, when we sum up these two vectors, we get our resultant vector. And for this case, when our two vectors point in the same exact direction and along the same exact axis, we can simply add up our two vectors. So vector 1 plus vector 2 will give us the vector beginning at vector 1, beginning at the tail of vector 1 and at the tip of vector 2. Now let's look at case 2, case B. Let's suppose that our vectors are still pointing along the same axis, let's say the x-axis, but now vector 2 is pointing in the opposite direction. So, in this case, we still add up vector 1 and vector 2, but now we have to keep in mind that vector 2 is in the opposite direction. So, it has a negative sign in front of the magnitude. So, let's suppose vector 1 is 30 meters per second, vector 2 is 45 meters per second, but it points in the opposite direction, so it has a negative sign in front of the 45. So, we have 30 plus negative 45, so the positive becomes a negative, and we're left with 30 minus 45 gives us 15 meters per second with a negative sign. So our resultant vector, our final vector, after we add up vector 1 and vector 2, points in the opposite direction as compared to vector 1. And so this is our final velocity resultant vector. Now, let's look at KC. Let's suppose that our two vectors V1 and V2 point in different directions. Let's suppose vector 1 still points along the x-axis, so here's our xy plane, but now let's suppose our vector 2 points along the y-axis. So vector 1 is perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to vector 2. So how exactly do we find our resultant vector? Well, we begin by drawing our vector 1, and then we draw our vector 2 starting at the end, at the tip of vector 1, and, and going in the same direction. And then to find the resultant vector, we simply start at the origin where our vector 1 begins and end at where vector 2 ends and this is our resultant vector. So essentially what we did is we constructed a triangle. And now we can use our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find what our resultant is. So in this case, a is our vector 1, b is our vector 2, and c is our resultant vector, what we're trying to find. So we have vector resultant squared equals vector 1 squared plus vector 2 squared. Since we're trying to find what our resultant vector is, we radical both sides and we get the following formula. So note the following. This formula only works 
for vectors that are perpendicular to one another, that are at a 90 degree angle to one another. Now, let's look at part D. Now, this formula, this equation is always true for addition of vectors. Whenever we add two or more vectors, let's say vector 1 and vector 2, the sum of those two vectors will always be greater than or equal to our resultant vector. So, when exactly are our vectors equal? When do we simply add vector 1 and vector 2 and we get our resultant vector? Well, we already saw such an example in case A. This is only true if the two vectors are along the same exact axis. So in this case, they will both along our x-axis. And they are both pointing in the same direction. So adding these two vectors up will give us exactly the vector of our resultant. Meaning our distance will be the same and our value will be equivalent to the combination, the sum of these two values. So in all other cases, vector 1 plus vector 2 will be greater than vector resultant. Why? Well, because if we look at the following triangle, one fact about a triangle is that if we take any two sides and add up those two sides, the sum of those two sides will always be greater than the third side. And so that's why we have this case here. So, there are two ways that we can draw our vectors using graphical methods. So, we have the tail-to-tip method and the parallelogram method. So, let's look at the tail-to-tip. So, here we have two vectors and we want to add up these two vectors and find what our resultant vector is. So, what we do is the following. We place the tail of the second vector, so here is our tail of the second vector, onto the tip of the first vector. So here we have the tip, the arrowhead of our first vector. So we take the tail end and we place it onto the tip end and we get the following picture. Now to draw our resultant vector, the sum of those two vectors, we begin at the tail of the first vector and end at the tip of the second vector. So here we have our resultant drawn in blue. Now, the parallelogram method is a slightly different method, but it will give us the same exact result, the same exact resultant vector. So, let's begin with the same two vectors, vector 1 and vector 2. Now, the two vectors are drawn from a common origin. So, I take vector 1 and I take vector 2 and I place them onto a common origin. So, I take the tail of one vector and connect it to the tail of the second vector and I keep my directions the same. So, now I have the following picture. And now what I do is I construct my imaginary adjacent, parallel adjacent sides to form my, my parallelogram. And to draw my resultant, I draw it from the common origin. Not from this location or this location, but from the common origin. Recall that in a parallelogram, the two diagonals are not necessarily identical. And that means I have to be careful about which one of these resultants I draw. The actual resultant is the resultant drawn from this origin, the common origin of my two vectors.